this video is going to help us go over for our last little district test we are going to take. So these are our bells, so our box elder learning standards. We're going to be working on percents and volume. So this video is going to go over some of the problems that you, similar problems you will see on your test. Then you're going to take your test in school city. You try and take it in one sitting because when you sign out, then we've got to reactivate you. So if it does need to be reactivated, please let me know, but try and do this at a time where you can sit down and do all 12 questions at one time. So this first one asks the ratio of cats to dogs. So first we need to find, it lists all the cats first. So here is a cat. So one, two, three, four cats. To the dogs, we've got one, two, three, four, five dogs to five dogs. So cats to dogs, four to five. It always needs to go in order of how it was read. Cats first, dogs second. So this next one asks cats to, or sorry, dogs, which we know is five. We just counted those to the total animals, including the dogs. There are four cats, five dogs, makes nine total. So that total includes everything, including the ones we've already looked at. Hey, we are going to solve for X here. So we can do this with a variety of strategies. So the easiest is we just want to see, can this go from here to here? We're just making these equivalent fractions here. So to get from six to 42, it takes seven times. So we want to do the same thing here or to go from seven to six was to divide by seven. So we have this bigger number. So we want to go this backwards way, which means we divide by seven. So 49 divided by seven is seven. So six sevens is the same thing as 42 over 49. So this one here, we can say, how do I get from four to 36? And that is timesing by nine. So something times nine equals nine. Or we can go backwards and divide by nine. So nine divided by nine, same thing on both sides to keep it balanced, is one. So that's just one way is to look and see, do these numbers work out nicely? So if they don't work out nicely, another strategy we can try is to get X by itself. So the opposite of dividing by x is to, or sorry, dividing by four is to multiply by four on both sides. So times by four. So now we have 36 divided by 36 is one. So either way, x equaled one. So we're just looking to get that x by itself or look for patterns of how they moved the same way. In one hour, Cami made four bracelets. So I know, right, in an hour, she made four bracelets and she used, so this is one hour equals four bracelets with 188 beads. What is the rate of beads per bracelet? So if, assuming every bracelet has the same amount, right? I want, so she made four, so this one hour actually has nothing to do with anything. That's just kind of throwing us off here. So we've got bracelets and these are beads. So in four bracelets, there was 188 beads. So I want to know the rate of beads per one bracelet. So on one bracelet per means one, how many beads were there? So I need to get B by itself. So the opposite right here, oh, my lights just turned out on me a little bit. So we're going to multiply these. So 188 times one is 188. And then we're going to divide by four to find B by itself. So this goes in here four times, which is 16, 28 left over, four goes into 28 seven times. So she used 47 beads per bracelet. 
Okay, our next one tells us that a store has helps an average of 15 customers every hour. So customers is 15 hours one. So I just want to write down what I know. If they helped 120 customers, so 120 matches to the top for customers, how many hours had they been open? So I'm looking for this hours here. So I want to get H by itself. So we're going to multiply here is 120. And then we'll divide by 15 to get H by itself. So it can't go into one, it can't go into 12, but it goes into 120. So let's see, if I do times by five, that is five, six, seven. So I've got to go bigger than that. So let me try eight here. So five times eight is 40, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So it goes in there exactly eight times. So on average, they're helping that many customers. So if they keep their average, they would have been open for nine, or sorry, eight hours. This chart displays the rate that Hank runs. So in 16 minutes, he ran two miles, 24 minutes, three miles, 32 minutes, four miles. What is his unit rate? So we've got to get this, right? So we can see he does 16 minutes for two miles. I want to know, how many minutes it takes him to run one mile. So how am I getting from 16 to two? I could take away 14, but is 24 minus 14, three? No, that's 10. So that's not my pattern, right? Unit rates do the same thing over and over. They're constantly doing the same thing. So I know I'm getting smaller. So if we didn't subtract, let's try dividing. 16 divided by what is two? 16 divided by eight. So let's double check. 24 divided by eight is three. So how am I getting from four to 32? Well, I times by eight. So when we're going to the minutes, we're timesing by eight. When we're going to the miles, we're dividing by eight. We're looking for this one mile here. So we wanna get bigger and times by eight. So in eight minutes, it they can go one mile. So our unit rate, I find my unit is one, one what? One mile in eight minutes. Or I can say two miles in 16 minutes. So we've got to find that unit here. I don't, I'm not running one minute for eight miles. That sounds pretty crazy. Given the fastest people, it takes them about four minutes to run a mile. So no way can this person, right? If I have my labels backwards, do one minute in eight for eight miles. That'd be okay. Eight miles in one minute doesn't make sense. One mile, oops, right? These are miles. One mile takes eight minutes. So my unit rate, one mile for eight minutes, two miles for 16 minutes, three miles, 24 minutes. Make sure we've got our labels matching up there. Okay, 40 is what percent is, sorry, 40% of what number is 30? So as we're doing these, is goes over of. The is is the percent. So it is the percent, sorry, I didn't wanna write that. So whoop, now it took it all the way, is over of, or another way to remember this is part over total. Our totals always go on the bottom. The percent goes on the top and percents are always out of 100. So 40%, so we have 40%. Of what? Of the total, so we're looking for this total here on the bottom, of what is 30, right? 40% is 30, so 40 and 30 should be matching up. So I want to get T all by itself. So we're going to multiply here. So 30 times 100 is 3,000. And then we're going to divide by 40. 
So it can't go into three, can't go into 30. So I've got to find these here. So 340 goes into 37 times, which is 280. We've got 20 left. And that goes in there exactly five times. So the total is 75. So 30 out of 75 is 40%. So we've got to think, what's our pieces? What's our total here? Of always goes on the bottom, is goes on the top to match those up. 24 of what percent? Sorry, 24 is what percent of 30? So 24 is the matching up to our percent. So 24 is what percent? Percents always go out of 100 of 30. So 24 out of 30 is what percent here? So we're going to get the percent by itself. So we're going to multiply by 100 is 2,400. And then we're going to divide by 30. So 30, 30, 60, 90, 180, oh, 210, 240. So that goes in there. So I, I did not count very well. 30, 60, 90, 120. I think I forgot that one. 150, 180, one, or sorry, 210. Wow, struggling counting by threes. And then 240. So it was in there eight times, right? Three goes into 24, eight times 240. So I need something above this zero here. So 30 goes into zero, zero times. So this is 80% is of percent 100 every time. Okay, Skyly's family ate 14 out of 16 pieces of pizza. What percent of the pizza did they eat? So my part is 14. The total is 16. We're looking for percent out of 100% of the pizza. So we want percent by itself. So we're going to do the opposite of divide is times by 100. So 1,400, and we're dividing by 16. So it can't go in there, can't go in there. Let's try 16 times five, just to get us started. So here's five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we can go bigger than that. So let's try 16 times eight. Here's a eight and 128, it looks like. So 128 goes is eight times. We've got 12 left over, bringing down a zero. So eight was too big. So I think seven will work. So 16 times seven, 42. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So 112. And we're going to bring down this zero here. Add a decimal. So it goes in there. But eight left over it goes into 80. Oh, perfect. We did that right there five times. So this, they ate 87.5% of the pizza. Okay, a few volume problems. So volume of cubes and rectangles is length times width times height. So the length is three, the width is two, the height is five. So three times two is six times five is 30 yards cubed because we did three dimensions length width height we're seeing how many cubes go inside of that okay find the volume we've got length times width times height the length is eight the width going back is two the height going up is four and a fourth so we want to make these improper so eight over one times two over one. Here's 16 plus one is 17 over four. So I think we can do a little canceling here. So four divided by four is one. Eight divided by four is two. So two times two is four times 17. So 17 times four, 28, four, five, six, so 68 over one times one times one is one. So this volume is 68 feet cubed. We can fit 68 cubes 
that are a foot by a foot inside of this shape here. Okay, this problem here tells us that a shipping company wants to know how many smaller boxes can fit into this larger box. So the smaller box is a cube, so all sides are the same. That is one and a half feet long, one and a half feet wide, and one and a half feet deep. How many little boxes fit into this big box? So the first thing we need to do is know the volume and the space that this large or smaller cube is taking up. So two times one is two plus one is three. So three halves length times width times height. So three times three is nine times three is 27. Two times two is four times two is eight. So 27 eighths, which also equals 8, 16, 24, 3, and 3 eighths. So my smaller box takes up that amount of feet. So now let's go ahead and find this volume to see what we can fit inside here. So we've got length times width times 8, 9 over 2 heights. These are all over one. So it looks like I can simplify a little bit here. That goes in there one time and three times. So now three times three is nine. Nine times nine is 81 over one. So this volume is 81. This volume is 27 and an eighth or three and three eighths, all right? This volume is 81. So now I'm going to see, take my big one, divide it by the little one, so we've got 81 over 1 divided by, I'm going to skip straight to 27 over 8. Since when I'm dividing and multiplying, I need improper fractions. Now we need to copy, dot, and flop. So I know, well, I could just do 81 times 8 divided by 27. But I know a number that goes into both of these. So 81 is divisible by 9, 9 times. 27 is divisible by 9, 3 times. Now I can even keep on going. 3 is divisible by 3, 1 time. 9 is divisible by 3, 3 times. So 3 times 8 is 24. 1 times 1 is 1. So that means there are 24 of the little boxes that fit inside the bigger box here. So we found our volume of the smaller one, found our volume of the bigger one, divided, copy dot flop. And remember, always take your bigger, what do you have? We have this whole thing. We're cutting it into these littler groups. Copy dot flop tells us how many little ones fit inside the big one. Okay, go ahead and do your trimester three school city test. So it is in school city. And if you aren't able to finish it, let me know so I can reactivate you so that you can get that completed. Okay, good luck.